Hey, what's up? This is Admiral Holdo here. It has to be said that I'm not the biggest purchaser of secondhand clothing, but my recent experience getting a couple of jackets on the low definitely made me reevaluate that. And more recently, I happened to pick up these, the acronym P23TS. CH. If you're a fan of the brand, then you'll probably know that these are one of the more popular models of acronym pants out there. And you'll probably also know that these days, a new pair of acronym pants are easily pushing the $1,000 mark thanks to recent price rises in the last couple of seasons. Well, I picked these up for under half that. These cost me just under $500 all in. And that, plus me wearing these quite a lot for the last couple of weeks, got me thinking, is it worth purchasing uh, used or older acronym at a substantially lower price compared to shelling out for the new stuff. And overall, how does used fashion weigh up against new in a way that isn't just about the money? So this P23 pickup, very much my first venture into the world of secondhand acronym, will kind of be my example for this video, but it's really stuff that applies to fashion generally. So a lot of this video will be relevant outside of techwear. But before we do a deep dive into this topic, thanks to our paid sponsor, John Flip, I've got a couple of top picks for you. If you don't know already, they're a secondhand marketplace where you can flip your Jorns and they've been adding some cool new features recently. And yeah, they've got some cool stuff on there as well. So some of my favorite things include these acronym P10s. They're the dry skin model, which is always a popular choice. There's quite a few acronym things on there actually at lower than retail prices. So if you're into the brand, it's worth checking out. This Valence Nemus jacket in size M is way under retail at $265. It's a jacket that I particularly like as well. I've tried it on in the Valence shop a couple of times now, so I think that's a really nice pickup. And also check out these dip dyed BBS Bamba 5s, such a cool unique finish, absolutely love those, and they're definitely worth a look as well. And in fact there's a whole bunch of stuff, so why not have a little browse? It's cool to see this is becoming something of a tech wear centric marketplace. And they're also, as I say, adding a couple of cool new features, so they've got this measurements feature where when you're selling something you can put in the measurements of the garment and it makes it easier for people buying it to know how it's going to fit them when it actually shows up, so you don't have to kind of worry about whether something's going to fit or trying to research like how the sizing on certain brands comes up just makes things way easier. You can also do this thing called binding offers. So if you're really super serious about buying something, you can basically dangle your cash in front of the seller's face and be like, if you accept this offer, you get paid immediately. It just goes straight out of your account and straight into theirs. It can help with quick sales or securing a deal because they know the buyer doesn't have to spend time sorting out their PayPal. So keep an eye out on John Flip. I'll stick a link down there in the description if you are tempted to check out some potential techwear bargains. To start this new versus used conversation, let's get the obvious side of things out of the way first. If you're excluding those hyped products where the resale price is greater than the retail price, what we're kind of looking at is like an equation between the price of something and the amount of damage or the amount of wear that it has. Damage which reduces its aesthetic or its performance characteristics. There's a massive scale here right the way from people that bought things and then never wore them to products that are absolutely cooked. Um, We'll take the P23s as an example here. These are something like four years old. They do clearly have signs of wear. On the phone pocket, there's a little bit of fading. There's one or two very small marks. And if you look down at one of the cuffs, you'll see that there is a little bit of damage or wear to that bit too. They're absolutely not a new product, there is no doubt about that, but their overall integrity is very much intact and they're not damaged in any kind of a significant way. So do those minor bits of damage that I've mentioned, considering that these probably cost around $800 back when they were new in 2016, does that really constitute approximately $300 worth of damage? If you feel that it doesn't, then therefore you're getting a good deal on these. It's a very simple equation and a very easy way of looking at things, but it does get a little bit more interesting than that. The value of a product, particularly with a brand like Acronym, is almost similar to buying a car in that if you buy something brand new, you're driving your new pair of pants off the lot, they're probably gonna lose a fair bit of value in that time frame if you happen to then resell them. But if you're buying an already used product, there's kind of less of its value to lose. So if I were to sell these on, for example, I would probably be able to get a pretty similar price to what I initially paid, so I can recuperate a greater percent of my investment. Of course, there are various variables there. It stands to reason that if you buy a secondhand product at market price, and you know the market remains the same, and you don't really cause any damage or wear to it, then you should be able to sell that product at 
pretty much the same as what you paid for it. Also, fashion is seasonal by nature, and most of the things that are available secondhand are from older collections and maybe aren't actually available new anymore. Take the P23s, for example. These came out back in 2016, so there's no way that you could buy these new even if you wanted to. And yet, strangely, a silhouette like the P23, which is one of acronyms best known, is probably more desirable than most of the products that are currently available on their website. For brands like Acronym that have limited stock of their products, being able to pick through used things and not just new gives you a massive range of stuff to choose from because if you miss one of the acronym drops then you're left with what a handful of different pan options on their website probably all of which you might not even like. If you visit the acronym website as a casual user, you probably have no idea that the P23 even exists. But if you're a real enthusiast, you might specifically be after the P23s and not want anything else. So the value of being able to do that can vary massively depending on the buyer. But old versus new isn't just a case of availability. It's also about product changes and revisions over time. It's actually pretty common to see products re-released but with new or better features. I certainly feel like with the P23s, there would be things that would be different if these were released again in 2020. For example, the phone pocket, it's big enough for a smaller sized or a regular sized phone, but doesn't really fit my Pixel 3 XL in. But from my understanding, newer acronym phone pockets have been made bigger to accommodate bigger smartphones. So that feature for me is not particularly useful. Also on more recent pants with oversized waists like the P30, they have the ability to lock the drawstrings, so it's much easier to cinch these into your preferred size. Whereas with these, you have to use a belt to do that. And it can be a little bit fiddly because there's so much waste room. And in fact, there's loads of things that Acronym could do differently with a re-release of these pants. Maybe they'd have different cargo pocket designs instead of the Texas webbing. Maybe they'd have zip off cuffs in a similar way to the P30A. And depending on what kind of features or design elements you value, the newer product might actually be of way more value to you than the older equivalent. Of course, it's impossible to say here because there isn't a 2020 version of the P23. However, old versions of products or things that are no longer produced can have some inherent value as well. You take the acronym J1, for example, older versions of the same jacket have a different cut to the new one. So depending on your body type, you might actually find that an older jacket from like 10 years ago is actually preferable to a brand new equivalent. And with brands like Stone Island, people often claim that the older products are of higher quality than the newer stuff. So ironically, by buying you, Used, you might get a product with more life in it than if you were buying something brand new. Also for some people or some subcultures you might find that having that new thing from the brand new season that has some clout or some value attached to it and that can make the older things seem a bit passe by comparison. You know they've already been seen on Instagram there's not really much point buying those whereas for others the inverse might apply and you might feel that value by buying those things that are older and kind of rare archival things maybe even stuff that not that many people are familiar with. Whether used or new products in that sense has more value really depends on what side of that idea appeals to you most. But all of those differences between old product and new product are absolutely something to be factored into that equation. But there's still one thing missing here, and in fact, it's not even about the product itself, but the wider environmental impact. Because nowadays, sustainability in fashion is becoming more and more important. And products that have green credentials or brands that are really doing something from an environmental perspective have a lot of weight and a lot of people like to buy into that idea. And it's definitely a good thing to want to invest invest in a product that holds those ideals, but it's even better to buy a product where there is essentially no cost of production because it's already been made. If people are empowered to buy and sell products on a secondhand market, then less ends up in landfill or wrapped around some poor turtle's neck. And that's a great way to be environmentally conscious and to reduce your impact on the environment without actually needing to change too much about your behavior. You can still buy the same kinds of products and brands that you like you don't just have to seek out eco-warrior brands. And that's something you can apply to loads of different parts of your life. And if people started doing that in general more, things would retain their secondhand value a little bit better. And that ends up being good for everyone, certainly good for Mr. Turtle. So in conclusion, I can't really claim that buying used versus new is anything but a personal decision. And that's because perceptions of value differ massively. For some people, you might have to really be buying something on the cheap to have something that anyone's worn before or is from an old 
older collection. But for others, the idea of buying something that's a little bit rarer that you can't actually buy new anymore might carry quite a lot of value and quite a lot of weight to you. Or you might not really care that something has a couple of signs of wear because let's face it, that's gonna happen when you start wearing it anyway. From my experience with the P23, it's clear that buying new has its advantages and there are things to be gained by buying a pair of pants like this from the upcoming SS20 season rather than looking back to 2016. But buying used simply gives you so many more options and makes it so much more affordable, you're paying three figures for an item as opposed to four figures, that it's absolutely worth considering regardless of how much you're stuck into the idea of only buying things new. $500 for my P23 versus like $1,200 for the P30s? Looks like I've just saved myself $700. And those are my thoughts on the idea of buying things new versus buying them used. Let me know what you think of my little P23 pickup here. Do you think I got a good deal on this stuff or do you think I should have saved my money and instead shelled out on the brand new thing? I'm gonna feature these in some more detail. Um, I wanted to do a specific video about these pants because I think there is quite a lot to talk about with them. Um, but yeah, I thought the idea of kind of new versus used stuff was also an interesting discussion to have. Anyway, let me know what you think of that down there in the comments, of course. Always good to hear you guys' opinions. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like because it's super appreciated. And we will be back next week with another one. Thanks again to John Flip for being paid sponsor of the video. Hope you enjoyed the little segment at the beginning, like picking out a few interesting products. I feel like that's kind of a fun way to do stuff like that. And shout out to you with the unpronounceable name for recommending some other cool brands. Uh, those are definitely worth checking out. So if you're into that military stuff that appeals to you, then uh, you've got some cool options there. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to check out some more stuff, there's going to be links at the top, of course. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then you should definitely consider doing so. Because, you know, we've got, we've got more stuff on these P23s. And we've got brands starting to release their SS20 stuff. So there's going to be some cool pickups around the corner for sure. Anyways, keep an eye out for that stuff because it's definitely coming.